What's up, my Ellis Crazy Amigo? It's your boy Terry speaking from the garage shop once again. Here to offer you some more big bang for the buck and uh, restoration tips. That's right. As you can see, I'm working on the floorboards here. Now, how do you know if you need a new floorboard? All right, new floor pan. All right. You take a hammer like this, right? Now, if you could take this hammer and go through the floor like that, Chances are you're going to need a new floor pan. That's right. And, you know, I have my theory why, you know, like now when you have these old cars like this, 67, Chevelle, stuff like that, you got to understand, GM never expected them to be around this long. The life expectancy from one of these cars, an old school car like this, is 5, 10, maybe 15 years. After that, it went to the junkyard. Now, I have a friend, and he ran a junkyard. It was a, his grandfather started in the 30s. He took over at some point, and his son takes over. So I knew the father and the son. I, and uh, they told me, well, they used to tell me stories that people used to bring, like, 63 Impala SSs, four-speed cars, and just bring them to the junkyard, just get them junked because of a water pump, a head gasket. People used to junk these cars because they were plentiful, and they were around, and you can get them. GM never expected, you know, these cars to be around 50 years later, when, especially when they were designing them and building them. Because if they had... They would have put better rust proofing down the floor. Now, what happens is, like I said, 50 years. Now, you got to look at where this is. Uh, this is the most rotten area right here, all right, for this car. Passenger side isn't bad. I could get away with that. But what happens is, you know, 50 years of, you know, you're sitting in the car and, you know, rain. Now, you know, people didn't used to baby these cars. People used to drive these cars in the rain, the snow, all kinds of crazy weather. And they put their wet feet all up in here, and the water would drip down and settle right about right here. And then what happens is now, you know, you wash your car and you forget to put the floor mat back in to protect the bottom of the rug and all that. So now you got your wet feet sitting up in here, dripping the water all the way down. Water gathers around here, and that's where you get that nasty mold funk, nasty smell in your car and everything like that. And then, you know, the, the car rots and all this, everything like that. And you get a guy, you know, who restores the car 50 years, some odd later, and now he's got to go and replace this board which <laughs> which is okay you got to expect that this is this is part of like I always like to say this is part of the fun of building these cars because like you get to get creative and get to see what's up now I've been reading a lot of discussions about what floor pans what metal sheet metal is the best metal to buy when you're restoring a car hmm now I deal with nothing but AMD if I can get an AMD panel if I, I like the original GM I mean, but I'm not going to go and spend like a quarter pa uh, fender. I'm not going to go and spend like $1,500 for original GM. Oh, no, I, I don't. <laughs> that's no, especially you get an AMD for, I think, like a hundred and something dollars, whatever it is. And uh, that's what I did. And they fit just as well. So at this point, what I got is I trimmed up the new piece and I got it in place where I want to burn it into place. I got it sheet screwed in. Remember, I love these sheet screws. So right now I have about an eighth of an inch all the way around and the new metal, the new pan is just resting about an eighth of an inch over the old metal. Now, what I'm gonna do is I already scored the area pretty much where I'm gonna have to take metal out from the original existing board. So the new board will fit right in the position. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna score it some more I'm gonna, with my grinder. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grind it on an angle. All right, so again, old metal, this is the new metal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in on an angle instead of coming in like this, because if I come in like this, it's gonna provide too much of uh, space where there's no room for error, and you gotta be pretty perfect with that. I got the thinnest wheel. So I'm gonna come in on an angle, not touching this, but coming on an angle, and what that will do is once I'm ready, and I cut all this around, it's gonna leave a little bit more space, whereas if I have to grind, I have material to grind and make a perfect, perfect fit. Whereas if I do it the other way, there may be, there may be nothing to grind and I have to add metal to make it a perfect fit. So we're gonna get with that and uh, let's get to work. <laughs> Now it's time to do a little bit of trimming and we should be good to go. Ready to start burning it in. 
permanently. Change of plans. I pulled an audible. See, I was gonna do a overlapping weld, but you know, from this point, which would be fine, overlap weld would be fine because you gotta look at it like this. You're gonna go and you're gonna put, you know, you're gonna protect it with some type of metal protectant, and then you're gonna go and, you know, probably do some type of rhino liner, or either then you're gonna go and put either some type of, I don't know, sound deadening again, sound deadener jute, whatever, over it, and then you're gonna go and put your rug in. And no one's gonna be able to tell the difference, but if the car is up in the air, you'll be able to see with an overlap. And I was gonna go like an eighth of an inch, boom, and then weld it, because I had it all cut out. But I figured, let me take about another hour, hour and a half, and cut the piece of metal perfectly, so now I could do a butt weld. And what basically a butt weld is, you got two pieces of metal, it doesn't overlap, they stay parallel, and you weld them in place on the same plane. So that way, being I'm going to have this car off the frame and I'm going to do a lot of uh, work underneath the car, welding, banging, whatever I got to do to get this car straight, all I got to do is do a little bit of grinding on the bottom and you will never be able to tell that this car was ever had repair with the floor panel, especially this one anyways. Alright, so here you go. Alright, so I welded the piece in, cut it out, welded it in. Ground it down a little bit because sometimes you get a little heavy with the weld, <laughs> with the welder. But even still, you know this is smooth. So like I said, when I take the car off of the frame, I can get up under there, smooth it out, and we'll be good to go. And there it is. I left this open because I'm gonna cut this piece out, and uh, so I can fit the T56 once I finish doing all the body work on this car. That's more like it. And that's how I go about welding floor portions into my 67 Chevelle or in any car. You know, because you want to make sure it's welded in and it's going to stay put. <laughs> and so you don't have any issues down the road. But at this time, oh, I want to take the opportunity to say thank you guys again for all the love, all the attention. All the questions, keep them coming. If you like what you see, you know how you know what to do. You know what to do. You need to hit that little subscribe button. Subscribe to videos because like I got a whole lot of other stuff jumping off. You guys are gonna be surprised what you see next. And that's just how we're gonna be doing it. That's just how we do it here in the garage shop. Alright? And again, thank you guys very much. But I'm looking at the clock on the wall. <laughs> Moved over there. Or should I say ceiling? Time for me to head on off and continue to do what I do because like I said. There's no me without you, all right? So, as always, as always, <clears throat> please be easy, and I will catch you guys real soon. Take care. Strong!